Good evening and welcome to Midweek. Coming up on tonight's show, we meet the woman who says her mother has given a fortune to the Irish cult House of Prayer. And with over 2.8 million members nationally, what are the implications for credit unions in this country as the Newbridge branch is effectively nationalised? Details of all tonight's features are available through the ShowPal app. Well, we're starting tonight with an update on a topic we've been covering on Midweek since we first came on air four years ago. Christina Gallagher's House of Prayer on Ackle Island continues to make newspaper headlines and for all the wrong reasons. Midweek's Michael Ryan reports. For 20 years, people have been coming to this building on Ackle Island off the West Coast. It's called the House of Prayer. And this is the woman they've been coming to see. Christina Gallagher says she gets messages from the Virgin Mary. She passes on those messages to her spiritual director, Father Gerard McGinnity from Knockbridge in County Louth. He then tells the faithful what the message was during weekend services on Ackle. The messages frequently warn of apocalyptic consequences for non-believers. Opponents of the House of Prayer say it's all a scam. Followers donate money and are encouraged to buy merchandise in the House of Prayer shop. Even the Catholic Church has withdrawn its backing. Midweek first came to the story several years ago, after newspaper revelations that Christina owned this €4 million Euro mansion in a plush Dublin suburb. How was she funding it? Two years later, another big house emerged, this time in the UK. It had seven bedrooms, its own swimming pool, and was worth more than €2 million. Euro. Using a secret camera, we went to the House of Prayer on Ackle and asked about the revelations as part of a documentary we were making. We were told Our Lady had asked the followers to get money together to buy Christina somewhere private because she was getting hounded by the media. Requests for interviews with Christina and Father McGinnity were left unanswered. Instead, we received solicitors' letters. Eventually, the House of Prayer did get in touch. They said they would agree to an interview, but after dragging their heels, it never happened. To this day, the homepage on their website says we declined their offer of an interview and told them that we could do what we like because we have the license. That never happened either. No one from TV3 would ever say that. As everyone knows, we don't have the license fee. Fast forward two years and we were contacted by this lady. We're calling her Anne, although that's not her real name. She wants to remain anonymous because she's concerned about any possible fallout of appearing on television. Her mother has been a follower of the House of Prayer for more than 10 years and she's very worried about her. It's had such a dramatic effect on our mother. Um, at the beginning she, she just began to pray more fervently and she would now she spends um, hours each day praying up to 100 rosaries a day. Um, she goes to, she attends mass several times a day. She makes this uh, journey over to Ackle once a week. Um, and she, she, she fasts for long periods of time. She doesn't eat. And uh, she's become isolated and withdrawn from the, from the family. Um, and I think that she's, she's, she's frightened too. Do you know, has your mother given the House of Prayer money? I can't say for sure about what money was, was transferred, but I can say that my mother was on a healthy pension at one stage, and now she's, she's living on the breadline now, and she's made some bad financial decisions. She's bought um, a lot of religious artefacts from Ackle. She's brought lots of statues, pictures. She owns a picture of the Virgin Mary. Um, with these roses, I know they, that she paid 250 euros for it, and she was told by the Ackle House of Prayer and by Christina and Father McGinnity that this would offer some protection for her. Two years ago, as part of our documentary, we met up with this man. His name is Mike Gard, and he runs a website called Dialogue Ireland. He's an expert on cultism and new religious movements. We were watched as we tried to interview him that time in Father McGinnity's Knockbridge Parish. There goes your man. There he is now. Two years on, we're meeting Mike again to get his take on what's been happening. It was hard to believe that last July was its 20th anniversary. Now, I would say that they're still able to uh, pack a punch because the kind of enclosed universe that they live in is not susceptible to critical 
analysis to TV programs to this definitely not to the Sunday world which is the devil incarnate you are number two and I'm I'm somewhere I'm the mediator between the devil operating between TV three and, and Sunday world uh, so I would say that the numbers are significantly down but uh, they try to give the appearance that there's a younger generation but it's basically conditioned to a particular type of folk religion the, this group of people they feel somehow their own parish isn't meeting their needs they find when people tell them that the old ways and this uh, that you can touch our lady directly this is real whereas you know the eucharistic congress it was all a bit fabricated but this thing is real our lady and your woman is doing healings you know if you look on the website there's healings for every day of the week there and they've got a video and i mean of course none of this can be authenticated and they a lot of this stuff is 20 15 years old and it's kind of recycling stuff but people believe that kind of stuff they're vulnerable Opponents of the House of Prayer are angry at the role of the Catholic Church in all of this. They say Father McGinnity's involvement gives the whole thing credibility and that the church hierarchy should stop him from attending. This is Father McGinnity in action, supposedly receiving what he calls darts of love from the Holy Spirit. Let it become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. When the House of Prayer started in 1993, it's true that it was officially opened by the then Archbishop of Tume, Dr. Joseph Cassidy. But in 1998, following an investigation, his successor, Dr. Michael Neary, banned the saying of Mass, confessions and all other sacraments there. So for the last 15 years, the House of Prayer has had no backing from the Catholic Church. Yet the church hierarchy won't actually come out and condemn it. Anne has written to Archbishop Neary in Tume and to Cardinal Sean Brady, the head of the Catholic Church in Ireland, but she got nowhere. We did the same thing. Cardinal Brady's office declined our request for an interview and referred us to Tume. Archbishop Neary's office also declined our request for an interview and referred us to previous statements the Archbishop had made several years ago. In the last of those statements, dated February 2008, the Archbishop said the House of Prayer has no church approval and the work does not enjoy the confidence of the diocesan authorities. Mike McCrory used to be a follower of the House of Prayer. Disillusioned, he left in 2007 and moved to America. I think one of the worst things she ever did, and I hope some of her followers are listening to this, I was present in the House of Prayer on two occasions. One, she claimed that the Mother of God the most beautiful human being that God has ever created, asked her to write a book naming all the people who are being bad to her. And then she said, she said, I wouldn't name names, sorry, I wouldn't name the names, but you'll all know who you are. And then months later, she said, our lady's been bugging her because she hadn't written the book. Now, that is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. And her followers should know that. To make our lady sound revengeful, vindictive, and spiteful is unforgivable. Like many opponents of the House of Prayer, Mike says Father McGinnity has a lot to answer for. He believes Christina's spiritual director does have a lot of good points, including the fact he blew the whistle on a scandal in Maynooth many years ago. But he says the church hierarchy needs to act against him now. So why isn't that happening? And why do they seem to be washing their hands of it all? Father McGinnity did tell us when the media was putting pressure on the church to close the House of Prayer down or at least stop Father McGinnity's involvement in it. Father McGinnity told us, he let it known, it was common knowledge in the House of Prayer that he was writing a book, or he would, would write a book. In other words, if the authorities come after me, they'll be sorry, because I'll come after them. Now, whether there's any weight behind that, I don't know. But the whole idea of Cardinal Brady allowing this man to continue when he's causing such a black eye to the church and the House of Prayer, the followers should know the House of Prayer is not the Catholic Church. Anne's mother is one of those followers. She agrees with Mike that after 20 years, it's time for senior church figures to stop talking and take action. I, I'm telling them what a desperate position that me and my family are in. We can get, we can't speak to our mother any longer. She's just isolated from her. We, we've, we've lost her. And the house of prayer in Ackle, it's just poison. It's poisoned our mother. It's poisoned our whole family. 
and and yet they just they 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 fail to act against Christina. They fail to have a public campaign uh, of of speaking out um, to warn people because the followers they still go there thinking that it's part of the Catholic Church. They think that this is a genuine Catholic entity, and it just couldn't be further than the, the truth. The Catholic Church, by its lack of response, is colluding with this organisation in, in its failure to act, uh, take responsibility for its members. Because these are people who are members of local parishes who believe that this is an actual better version of their own church. And that brings shame on the Catholic Church. And if it doesn't act, it will continue its downward decline to zero. All right, after the near collapse and forced takeover of Newbridge Credit Union this week, we'll be asking if other credit unions could be in trouble and what this might mean for credit union members.